I'm here with Suda51 and his translator, Alan. I'm sure you know Suda51. He's a pretty prolific game designer and director. So we're going to talk about his history and stuff like that. So just to begin, his new game, uh, No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again. Uh, it's not really a character action game like I kind of thought it would. Um, it's more of a co-op, top-down brawler sort of. Uh, so what made you guys want to do that instead? Travis strikes again, it's with the same It's no no more heroes to explain much. The character action to your more much of a pop down broader thing. Yeah, it's a conference of the school of the moment. Well, number one, there's a new IP to the Travis strikes again. It's good to be in the school of the moment. Well, I'm a keyboard to get it. For my own man, no style, game style, or it's cover the knee. まあ、も,もっとよりコンパクトなチームで、インディーサイズの中で、で今回も実は任天堂のニンディーズのブランドを出してるんですけども、いわゆるインディーズとしての新しいチャレンジを、このノーマーヒーローズのシリーズを使ってあのやってみたくて、で、あのゲームプレイもそうなんですけども、すべてが新しい形で挑戦したかったんですよ。So yeah, that's a good observation.、Um, as you can tell from the title of it, this is not No More Heroes 3. This is、um, actually kind of a, a, a new IP, a new direction for Travis. Um, and what we're trying to do is with this, we're looking kind of more for an indie spirit, meaning the, the team is much smaller than it's been up until now.、Um, and so, in order to kind of facilitate that indie spirit and as well as to best utilize all the members of the team, we thought this would be a better way to,、uh, to realize that, which is、uh, why it's going to be like, a, like you said, kind of a top down brawler game. Okay, cool. So, I actually played a little bit with him the other day at Nintendo's HQ.、Uh, it's, it had sort of a Meta, like PS1 level, like presentation over it all. Can you、uh, kind of describe the inspiration to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Travis is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be a game in the game. So, the setting is going to be えー、なんていうかな、パワー、パワーグローブ的なものをつけるんですよ。そうすると、完全にゲームの中に入ってしまう。だから、危険なゲームだからこそ発売できなかった。で、その時のために用意されていた、まあ、6つのローンチゲームの中にトラベスは入って戦う。で、当時大体それが1990年代初頭のゲームハードなんですね。そうなると、時代的にはやっぱり4対3のアスペクト。でそのゲームの中に入ってしまうということで、まあ、そこに対して忠実に、ゲストライブの世界観を作って、でその中にトラベスが入っていくという、まあ、そんな流れになっています。So, actually, this kind of touches on the story. So, what happens in No More Heroes, Travis,、uh, Travis Strikes Again, is that Travis actually gets、uh, this like mythical console called the Death Drive Mark II. So, it was kind of released in the early 90s.、Um, and this was a, a console that never actually went to actual retail sale. Because、um, it used like these special gloves that you put on. And when you put on the gloves,、um, you actually entered into the world of the game. So, as you can imagine, that's a very, very dangerous thing.、Um, for launch, there were six titles planned for this console. And Travis has managed to capture to get them all. And so, when he puts on the gloves, he enters into the world and he gets inside the worlds of the game. Again, because this is a console from, that's supposed to be from the early 90s,、um, the aspect ratio is 4 by 3. So, it does have a very 90s feel, which you correctly pointed out. Cool, awesome. Uh, so, since it is a different genre and something not, that you haven't really done before, how have you, what other games did you look for、uh, for inspiration, like for the gameplay side of things?あとはその具体的に大好きなゲームがあって、まあそれがすごくモチーフになってるたりとか、まあ本当にいろいろ、いろいろな形でありますね。Tons.、Uh, for example, some of them are from games I played when I was a kid. Others would be from past Grasshopper titles, titles that I've just been playing overall.、Um, can't really pinpoint anything in particular, just tons and tons of games that I've played. Okay, right on. That's probably the best answer.、Uh, so it's coming out on the Switch.、Uh, no other platforms announced for it right now, right? Uh, so, you've got,、uh, No More Heroes origi originally launched on the Wii.、Uh, so, there's a Nintendo through line here for this series, especially, especially this series.、Um, why stick with Nintendo again? I mean, well, I think it's a good 
、任天堂ハードシリーズみたいな形になってる、今週なんですけれども、いやいやいやなぜ任天堂さんに転がるのかというふうに感じましては。うーん、あの、ノーマンヒローズとウィーがやっぱりすごく相性が良くて、まあそれはコントローラーもそうだし、あのー、ウィーだからこそ、まあ、ウィーの中ですごく成功したタイトルだというふうに僕自身もかあの感じていて、だからこそこのシリーズを復活させるには、やっぱりニンテンドープラットフォームがすごく一番適してると思ってるし、あとファンのみんなからすごく要望が強いんですよね。で、ウィーユーが発表された時も、ノーマンヒローズをぜひっていう声がすごくあって、だからこそ、やっぱり任天堂の新しいプラットフォームができるたびに、僕の頭の中でも、ノーマンヒーローズシリーズを復活させるっていう,うイメージが出来上がってくるんですよね。まあ、それぐらいすごく、まあ、あの、ノーマンヒーローズシリーズと任天堂プラットフォームっていうのは、多分相性がめちゃくちゃいいんじゃないかなと思います。Uh, the Noma Heroes series just kind of fits. I mean, if you look like you said back to Noma Heroes on the Wii, the controller was perfect for it, what he had in mind.、Um, and so using that functionality really made for A great game. And in the same way,、um, as soon as he heard like a Wii U was announced, he thought fans were like, oh, you should make another No More Heroes. And he said every time the Nintendo makes a new hardware, he, he feels like it would be good to bring back No More Heroes. And he's always wanted to put it on there.、Um, another thing, too, is that、uh, for this time, it, with it coming out on the Switch, this was the perfect opportunity because obviously they ended up skipping、uh, No More Heroes、uh, for the Wii U. But、um, overall, just No more heroes and Nintendo platforms seem to have a really good,、um, they sync up really well.、So. Cool. So, wait, you said the Wii U. So, was there any plan to bring this to the Wii U? Can you like, delve into that a little more? あの、アンリアル3に移行して、で、結構その、えー、なんていうかな、散布作じゃないんですけども、シャドウ・ザ・ダムロー、ロリポップ・チェーンソー、キラー・ゼットっていう、まあ、ある意味散布作なんですけども、これにずっとこう集中してたので、なかなかその Wii U のプラットフォームに入ってくるタイミングでなかったんです。So, that's,、uh, the Wii U era was when we started working on Unreal 3, using the Unreal 3 engine. And, you know, there's, I guess there's a, you could almost call them a trilogy of games. You've got Shadows of the Band, you've got Lollipop, Lollipop Chainsaw, and Trailer is Dead. And we were kind of focused on them, so we didn't really have an opportunity to kind of look to make the Wii U and do anything for it. So that's probably why we didn't do anything on the Wii U. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense when you put it in perspective like that. I didn't think about that.、Um, so、speaking of Shadows of the Damned, it's my personal favorite. It's right above Lollipop Chainsaw for me.、Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those guys.、Uh, so. <laughs> So, I guess with the perspective of what, like it was like 2010, right? Was, or 2012 or something, right?、Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so now that we've had a few years to kind of look back on that,、uh, how, do you, how do you reflect on looking,、uh, making that title, especially with the, what was it, Kira Yamaoka and、um, Shinji Mikami? Like, that's like a dream team of Japanese developers.、Um, how, do you, how do you look back on that title, like both good and bad? Because I don't know how well it did or anything, and, but I know it reviewed pretty well. So, how do you look back on it? ツアーがあったんですけども。まあ、その時に三上さんも一緒に同行してくれて、まあ、いろんな、まあ、最終的には家でも作ることになったんですけども、家以外のパブリッシャーにも三上さんも一緒に同行して、だいたい北米10日間ぐらいですかね、いろんな場所に回ったんですけども、まあ、その旅もすごく楽しくて、旅でずっとギャグを言い合って、周りがみんな笑って、<笑>まあそういう旅がすごい思い出深いというか。It's actually a lot of fun. It says, I remember, you know, this is the first time that like, Mikami san and I worked together as like the producer, director, tag team. Since Killer 7. And、um, we had made the concept for this game first. And we actually went to pitch it、um, in North America. So we came here to North America, went to about 10 different、uh, companies to pitch it. And I remember he says it was great because、um, we would like have all these gags and jokes that we'd be playing with other people, w o u l d be laughing.、Um, it turned out to be a, a really good trip and it was a lot of fun. So, really great memory. Good. I'm glad you reflect、uh, positively on that experience. Because,、uh, yeah, I really, I really liked that game. So. I'm glad you liked making it too.、Um, so, going, so, going to the other extreme,、uh, Killer is Dead is one of your titles that doesn't seem to have 
gathered as much of a positive response from the fans. Uh, do you have any memories of that? Do you have any like regrets or any sort of general reflections on that game? あの、他はない。いやいや。思うんですけれども、まあ、そのゲームについてちょっと話してみたいなと思い出とか、いろいろあるんですけども、やっぱりあの、ピラジェットはすごく難産だったタイトルで、最初のプロトタイプを作った
So, rather than a, a direct sequel, what I'd love to do is actually make a, a complete version of the game. And what I mean is that I might have wrote a little too much when I made this game because two thirds of the script that I wrote ended up being cut in the game. And so, someone we've been talking to mentioned maybe like a final cut, and he said, That would be wonderful. I'd love to do something like that. That would be kind of the dream for this to succeed. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you had that, uh, that in mind. Uh, that's about all the questions I had today. Uh, you guys want to let me know anything else? Like, any... It doesn't have to be specific, just whatever. まあ、まずはね、これが、まあ、キラーセブンがあって、トラビススラックスアゲアなんで、まあ、このTシャツも実はいろんなヒントなんですよね。いや、ナイス。<笑> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, it's like, cool. Um, so as you know, Killer7 is coming. And then after that, uh, Travis Strikes Again is also coming. And in terms of hints, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but the t-shirt that we're both wearing here actually might be a hint for something in the future. Who knows? I don't know. What, what could it possibly be? All right, well, that's about it for us. Uh, Michael from Game Revolution, and thanks for watching. <laughs>